Timeless Concepts from Physics Helpline. This is a video tutorial series through which we will sharpen our problem solving skill. First, we will analyze the problem on hand to find the related concepts. Then using these, we will develop a method which will produce the solution. This will help the students aspiring to get into IIT to understand the much needed advanced theories and applications in physics. In this video tutorial, we will discuss the theory of graphs in kinematics. Before proceeding to understand the graphs in kinematics, let us recall the related concepts. Slope of a straight line. Consider a straight line segment AB in the XY plane making angle theta with the positive X direction as shown in the figure. Let the coordinates of A and B are X1, Y1 and X2, Y2. When we move from A to B along the graph, height gained is equal to BC. In traveling horizontal distance, is equal to AC. Therefore, slope of AB is M is equal to BC by AC, but in triangle ABC, BC by AC is equal to tan theta, which implies M is equal to tan theta. Now, AC is equal to change in X, which is equal to delta X, which is equal to X2 minus X1. And BC is equal to change in Y, which is equal to delta Y, which is equal to Y2 minus Y1. Therefore, M is equal to tan theta, which is equal to delta Y by delta X, which is equal to Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1. Since the angle made by a straight line with X axis is constant at every point on it, it follows that slope of a straight line is constant. In the second figure, we observe that slope of a curve is not constant. Therefore, it has to be defined at a point as follows. To define the slope of a curve at P, we draw a tangent to the curve at P. Let theta be the angle made by the tangent with the positive x direction. Therefore, we define the slope of the curve at P as m is equal to tan theta. Therefore, it follows that m is positive when tan theta is positive, that is, when theta is less than 90 degrees, and it is negative when tan theta is negative, that is, when theta is greater than 90 degrees. Derivative of a function and slope. Consider a function y is equal to fx whose graph is shown in the figure. Let the coordinates of a is equal to xy which changes to x plus delta x, y plus delta y at b. Therefore, we have y plus delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x or delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus fx, which implies delta y by delta x is equal to f of x plus delta x minus fx divided by delta x. Since AB is not a straight line, delta y by delta x cannot represent the slope tan theta. Now, we will use an approximation. We know that a small portion of a curve at a point may be considered to be a straight line coinciding with the tangent at that point. Hence, delta x is made very small and in the limiting case, we write delta x tends to zero, which means that delta x is negligibly small, but delta x is not equal to zero. Therefore, we get limit delta x tends to zero, delta y by delta x is equal to limit delta x tends to zero, f of x plus delta x minus fx divided by delta x. We define the derivative of the function as dy by dx is equal to limit delta x tends to zero, delta y by delta x. In this limiting case, AB becomes a straight line and dy by dx represents the slope of the function. Therefore, we write m is equal to dy by dx. Now, we understand the area under a graph. Consider the graph of the function y is equal to fx as shown in the figure. Consider a narrow vertical strip of width dx. Therefore, area of the strip dA is equal to y dx which is equal to fx into dx. Therefore, area under the graph between points x is equal to a and x is equal to b can be obtained by integration. Therefore, area a is equal to integral of fx dx between limits a and b. For easy recall, we remember slope as the quotient of the quantities taken along y-axis and x-axis 
and area as the product of these two quantities. Now for the graphs in kinematics. Position time graph. Here time t and position x are taken along x axis and y axis respectively. Therefore slope is equal to dx by dt which gives velocity and area is equal to displacement into time which is not useful in physics. Velocity time graph. Here time t and velocity v are taken along x axis and y axis respectively. Therefore slope is equal to dv by dt which gives acceleration and area is equal to velocity into time which gives the displacement. Acceleration time graph. Here time t and acceleration a are taken along x axis and y axis respectively. Therefore slope is equal to dA by dt which is not useful in physics and area is equal to acceleration into time which gives the change in velocity. Now let us understand how information about the motion of a particle can be obtained from different graphs in kinematics. First let us consider the position time graph. When the position time graph is a straight line coinciding with the time axis, the particle is permanently at rest at the origin. When the position time graph is a straight line parallel to time axis, we observe that slope is equal to zero. Therefore, velocity of the particle is equal to zero. Therefore, the particle is at rest at a constant distance from the origin. When the position time graph is an inclined straight line passing through the origin, we observe that x is equal to zero at t is equal to zero and slope is positive and a non-zero constant. Therefore, the particle starts from the origin with a constant positive velocity. When the position time graph is an inclined straight line not passing through the origin, the particle starts with a constant positive velocity but not from the origin. When the position time graph is a declining straight line above the time axis, we observe that slope is constant and negative. Therefore, the particle approaches the origin from the positive side with constant velocity. When the position time graph is a declining straight line below the time axis, we observe that slope is constant and negative. Therefore, the particle moves with a constant velocity and moves away from the origin from the negative side. When the position time graph is curving upwards and it is concave from above, we observe that slope is positive at every point and it increases with time. Hence the particle is moving with positive velocity which continuously increases with time. When the position time graph is curving upwards and it is convex from above, we observe that slope is positive at every point and it decreases with time. Hence the particle is moving with positive velocity which continuously decreases with time. When the position time graph is curving downwards and it is concave from above, we observe that slope is negative at every point and it decreases with time. Hence the particle is moving with negative velocity and its speed continuously decreases with time. When the position time graph is curving downward and it is convex from above, we observe that slope is negative at every point and it increases with time. Hence, the particle is moving with negative velocity and its speed continuously increases with time. Now let us consider the velocity time graphs. When the velocity time graph is a straight line coinciding with the time axis, we observe that velocity is zero at all times. Hence, the particle is permanently at rest, not necessarily at the origin. When the velocity time graph is a straight line parallel to time axis, we observe that velocity is a non-zero constant at all times. Hence, the particle is moving with a constant positive velocity. When the velocity time graph is an inclined straight line passing through the origin, we observe that the particle starts from rest. Slope is a positive constant, hence the particle is moving with constant positive acceleration starting from rest. When the velocity time graph is an inclined straight line not passing through the origin, we observe that acceleration 
is a positive constant and initial velocity is not zero. When the velocity time graph is a declining straight line above the time axis, we observe that velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. Hence, the particle is moving with positive velocity whose speed decreases with time. When the velocity time graph is a declining straight line below the time axis, we observe that the slope is negative. Therefore, velocity and acceleration are both negative. Hence, the speed of the particle continuously increases with time. When the velocity time graph is curving upwards and concave from above, we observe that slope is positive and increasing. Also, velocity is positive. Hence, the particle is moving with positive velocity and non-uniform positive acceleration and its speed increases continuously with time. When the velocity time graph is curving upwards and convex from above, we observe that slope is positive and decreasing. Also, velocity is positive. Hence, the particle is moving with positive velocity and gradually decreasing acceleration such that its speed increases with time. When the velocity time graph is curving downwards and concave from above, we observe that slope is negative at every point whose magnitude decreases with time. Therefore, velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. Hence, the particle is moving with positive velocity and its speed decreases with time. When the velocity time graph is curving downwards and convex from above, we observe that slope is negative at every point whose magnitude increases with time. Therefore, velocity is positive and acceleration is negative. Hence, the particle is moving with positive velocity and its speed decreases with time. Now, let us consider the acceleration time graphs. When the acceleration time graph is a straight line coinciding with the time axis, we observe that acceleration is zero at all times. Therefore, the particle moves with constant velocity, hence the corresponding velocity time graph is a straight line parallel to time axis. When the acceleration time graph is a straight line parallel to time axis and above it, we observe that acceleration is constant and positive. Therefore, the particle is moving with constant positive acceleration, hence the corresponding velocity time graph is an inclined straight line. When the acceleration time graph is a straight line parallel to time axis and below it, we observe that acceleration is constant and negative. Therefore, velocity decreases with time. The corresponding velocity time graph is a declining straight line. We have plotted it above the time axis, assuming that initial velocity of the particle is positive. When the acceleration time graph is an inclined straight line, we observe that acceleration is positive and increasing at constant rate. Therefore, slope of the corresponding velocity time graph should be positive and increasing with time. Hence, it should be curving upwards and concave from above. When the acceleration time graph is declining straight line, we observe that acceleration is positive and decreasing at a constant rate. Therefore, slope of the corresponding velocity time graph should be positive and decreasing with time. Hence, it should be curving upwards and convex from above. This completes the theory of graphs in kinematics.